chairman of Holland & Company, owner of the tunnel, and the sexy half of Holland Oats. And David Spica, senior VP and investment strategist with WHG Funds. Mr. Spica, where's this market headed? Great question, Mark. I think the employment numbers really gave us a reality check. Now, the trend of the recovery is still in place, but I think what this showed us is maybe the market got a little ahead of itself and expectations got a little ahead of themselves in terms of the recovery. We still think the recovery is in place. We still think stocks can go up from here, but we really think that the best place to be is in the large cap, high quality names. They are significantly undervalued relative to the rest of the market given the rally last year, and we think that's where investors need to focus. Mike Holland, what do you make of this uh data we got. You know, jobs look pretty good last month. Now all of a sudden they don't look so good again. Well, you're talking to businesses, Mark. Uh, they're telling you what, what the numbers show us, and that is that there's there's a very lumpy cyclical recovery going on, and it's very punk. And at this point, I think we're, get, we're about to enter earnings seasons next week uh, with uh, Alcoa. I think overall, these numbers represent that. Companies aren't hiring. They're, they're getting some up, upturn because of the cycle. But I would, I would listen to David in terms of the market for the viewers. Uh, they, Westwood, his firm, has, has done a great job over the years buying and selling the large quality companies. If, if they're buying the large quality companies now, despite a slow economic recovery, I would be mindful of that. David, uh, PIMCO did an analysis, and we're going to ask Christina Romo about it in a moment, that uh, we had to issue $1.5 trillion of new debt last year in 2009 in this country just to finance our deficit. 80% of that debt was bought by the U.S. Federal Reserve, which means, well, I guess you could use the word Ponzi scheme, but I mean, they're printing the money and buying it. How, how long can we continue doing that? I mean, is that not something that at some point becomes, you can't have a market that goes up with that situation? Absolutely, Aaron, and I think that's what we saw with the, the dollar depreciation and the rise in gold as concerns about our fiscal situation here, and clearly at some point we're going to have to get to a situation where the economy can grow on its own without the uh, support of, of government stimulus, and, and you're right, at some point we're going to have to pay that back. Um, I think that's a couple of years down the road. I don't know that for 2010 that that's going to be that big an issue. At some mm -hmm. point the Fed's going to have to start removing uh, liquidity. They're going to have to raise rates. That will have an impact on the market and on investment. Uh, optimism, but I think that's more of a 2011-2012 issue. As far as 2010 goes, I think we can still feel pretty comfortable that as far as economic growth and, and equity valuations are concerned, we ought to be okay. Give me one word answers, guys, because we're out of time. When the Fed begins to withdraw its quantitative easing, its exit strategy, is that bad news because higher rates hurt stocks, or is that good news because it means the economy is getting better? Bad or good, Michael? Good. David? Uh, temporarily bad, but ultimately good. Temporarily bad, but ultimately good. That was five words. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Mike and David, thank you very much, guys. Have a great weekend.